Ooh, honey, do you know what this is? What? It's a big, hot, nasty pile of goss. Ooh, and you know you just can't get enough of it. I want to roll around in it. Mm, this week we discuss Cowboy Carter aging gracefully and <laughs> tons of drag queens on TV. Plus, the AAA girls are headed to Tokyo. Yeah. From Sydney to LA to J- from Sydney to LA to Japan. We are critical of queer history being only taught selectively in our country, but we celebrate our trans family on their day of visibility. Plus, tons of juicy DMs from the cave. Oh, do you have all the goss collated and organized by Drick Pick? I'm right on top of that, Rose. M. Oh. M. Mom! We want to welcome you back for another Dang. steaming, piping, piping. scalding, God. serving of hot, hot goss. goss. This is our weekly chat show where we talk about events in our lives, lives. gossip and politics, Tics. and take a deep dive into the DMs. Deep dives. So let's get into some hot goss. goss. That's hot goss. It's April. Today we're filming this on April Fool's Day, and I um I despise you. practical jokes. I don't like them. I think they're mean spirited. Mm-hmm. I like jokes that are funny. That's, yeah. Um. Jokes, 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 jokes. I love, um, I, wow. Just such a love fest here today. I, um, love RuPaul. Have you been reading? I have. Liz will be eating. Will be, be reading. reading. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wonderful book, um, and the words in it aren't bad either. Okay. Yeah. It's how it's, far are you in? I'm on page thirty-seven. Have you found the hidden meanings? I have not, but uh, RuPaul does have a lot of things in here. Which, if you go on Drag Race. You should read this first so you know her references that she grew up with and learned and loved. Like she talks about Valley of the Dolls, Flip Wilson, Cleopatra Jones, Mm. um, her mother assaulting her aunts. Um, Just like other things like Barbizon School of Modeling and Poise. Like you should know what that is if you go. Just because like, you know, you want to make the host laugh. You want to be prepared. Totally. So this book, if you're going on Drag Race season six, 17? 17? Is it season 17? Mama, a few seasons of this show exist. Yeah, just a few. Yeah, you should definitely check out this book. It's not one of those self-help books that helps no one, you know? Uh, they, uh, I always recommend reading RuPaul, all of RuPaul's books if you're trying to get on Drag Race. Hiding My Candy, Guru, House of Hitting Me. Hiding My Candy. Oh, that's Lady Chablis. You should read that um, one, though, too. Uh, well, sure, why not? But there's the first one is Letting It All Hang Out. That's it, yeah. And that is, like, her entire, like, life story. There's also That's stuff... That's one that ends with Diana Ross, right? On the plane? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also just a way of, like, I don't know, seeing her philosophy. And if you're going to be on Drag Race, you have to sort of be a steward of her philosophy, if you want to, like, I don't know. I mean, she literally told us well on Drag U, we were there to do her legacy work. Yeah. So you should know Gee. you should know what the work entails and references. Uh, are you doing anything specific for spring summer this year? Uh, 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 spring summer. Resort? Uh, spring summer, September. Okay. Um, she by Sheree. Oh. Spring summer. That's that lady who was supposed to put out leggings that never did, right? <laughs> Joggers? Joggers. What's a jogger? Joggers. Oh, I'm just in my joggers. Don't uh, mind me, I'm just in my joggers. You doing your uh, Everybody Loves Jamie accent? <laughs> Jama! Everybody's talking about your Jama! <laughs> have you listened to Cowboy Carter? I have. It's great. I listened to it on the way to uh, Riches in San Diego, and then I listened to it on the way back up. Colder than Titanic waters, honey. I heard that. Oh, and I was like, oh, waters. the Titanic kids must be going up. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, well, yeah. Colder than Titanic waters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, this. Her Jolene. Uh, that's my favorite song on it. I think Jolene and then Daughter. Mama. It's so good. 
mother. And then Tanner, this girl that I follow from Instagram, her name's Tanner Adele, I think. She has a song called Buckle Bunny, which is all about like being a whore for cowboys and like Southern people. And like, it's a really good song. She's on this album too. And she's had to keep it a secret for like years, basically. It's been years in the making, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to see Beyonce uplifting other voices in country. Um, black women who didn't get the credit for their country contributions years ago. I think Linda Martell is one of those people. Um, and then hearing like Willie Nelson on it and Dolly and getting their like cosign is fun. It's yeah. just such, it's just such a great album. It's a really good album and such a stunt. She's so fucking smart. Mm-hmm. What do you think? The th- what color hair do you think the third one will be? Oh wait, there's a third. Yes, there's three. The third one is a rock album. Maybe she'll do black hair. Ooh, I hope the horse is like a skeleton for the rock one, like ACDC oh, breathing fire, like skeleton. Sure. Like a Pegasus skeleton. That would be dope. Wait, I just saw this tweet, but I think it might be a lie. Well, it is April Fool's Day. Right? I don't believe shit. <laughs> I got you. I don't believe What'd nothing. You get about? I don't believe nothing at all. When was this posted? April 1st. Okay. What is it? Tell me. It says, in a new interview with Billboard magazine, Lady Gaga says she regrets making Joanne. This is not true. This can't be true. Uh Uh-uh. While I look back at Art Pop as an album ahead of its time, I think Joanne was a misstep. I had an original concept in mind that featured dance pop songs with red ones. This is such a lie. See, I hate you, faggots. (laughs) Fuck you guys. That's a lie. But what is not a lie is Ernie Hudson. Honey. Who? Ernie Hudson. He's in Ghostbusters. Uh, he's dun, 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 dun. He's 78 and fucking jacked. Wait, and by wait. jacked, I mean I'd like to see him on jacked. Oh, wow. Because he's 78? 78. And bitch, he has poured into this muscle shirt. It don't crack, baby. It is not at all moisturized and gleaming, and this mustache, baby, I must ask him a question. <laughs> and it's about his undercarriage. Ooh, ooh. Do you think you'll look this good at seventy-eight, Mama? Drag is a um... musical <laughs> in New York this summer. Ooh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Drag is expensive. Uh, drag is fucking expensive. Uh, I no- can't believe I'm understudying Brandon. Dra- <laughs> Brandon. Yeah, him. Him too. Uh, He's twins now. I conjoined. I love. I love you for that role. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, we'll have to have you self tape. I'm gonna need a pudding rehearsal. <laughs> A pudding rehearsal uh, where I get banana. to eat pudding the whole time <laughs> while everyone rehearses. Uh, I can't wait to see your show in New York. I'm very excited. I'm also excited to see Drag on Television. Candy Muse is on The House of Villains season two. And this promo wow. is side lit. She looks beautiful. That's how you know it's not a drag show. That's how you know that straight people are at the helm. She still looks great. She does. I didn't, yeah, she does. And Alyssa Edwards is also on Amazon Prime for a show called The Goat, which is a show that will decide the most iconic star out of the greatest reality contestants of all times. Oh. Which is weird because we're not on it. And I don't (laughs) recognize any of these people other than Alyssa. Who are these nice people? Who the fuck are these people? Oh, wait, that's Reza. Where and who? Who, is that a boy or a girl? Reza is in the Gucci tracksuit, and Reza was on Shaws of Sunset. Never seen it. Okay. Isn't I think that about there's a lot of Big Brother no. and, like, cooking competition. I think it's those type of people on this show. Oh. Well, those are shows I didn't get on either. Um, <laughs> I have no clue who any of these people are, and maybe that just means I'm 40. Lordy, Lordy, look who's 40. Yeah, I know I have no idea. Um, but uh, so maybe Alyssa will win. That would be lovely. That would be lovely. She deserves a win. It's always, it's always I always wonder about when drag queens get cast on a show like this, because I was cast on kind of a show like this years ago. Sharknado. Scared famous. Oh, yeah, that one. 
And I was the only drag person there. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a question of, I sort of had to make the decision of how much or how little I was going to be in drag mm -hmm. because. Like this podcast. Because, right. Because there's no set time for you to get in drag. So I woke up every morning before everyone else mm -hmm. and got in drag before like cameras were up. Yeah. That was my, because I wanted to be in drag as much as possible, they unlike this podcast. They interviewed me for um, House of Villains season one. <laughs> and then when they, when they didn't cast me, they said they'll come back to me for season two. And when they interviewed me for season two of House of Villains, they specifically asked that, like, how much will you be in drag? And I said, anytime that there's a camera on, I think I'm better in drag. So I will wake up and take it upon myself to get in drag earlier so I can sure. give that to you. And I thought that that was a great answer during casting for me to like, for them to want to put me in it. Yeah. But it, um, it did not suffice. Is Candy a villain? I don't know. If you don't have star quality, get the fuck out. She's definitely, um, um, I think she's loud and brash and brazen. I don't think she was like. Villainous. Villainous has like a sort of insidious, like kind of like sneaky. She was very like, I'm telling you what the fuck I think. Yeah. I mean. Are you a villain? I told them in my interview, I don't think that I'm a as much of a villain as I am an anti-hero. Okay. Like Carrie Bradshaw. Yeah. I'm like perfectly imperfect and okay with that. But I will also, I think drag is at its core a disruptor. Sure. And it. No matter what, like you want to, you want to disrupt what anybody is doing, so they look at you for some reason. And I was talking with this guy named John in San Diego about this, and he said that I'm the greatest disruptor. And I was like, I love that. Yeah. Because like, I feel like drag should like be something separate from the norm that makes people stop and look at it, and that's why our platform is so important. Drag queens, you know, are um, valuable in our community for getting words out and messages out, and for like fighting for what's wrong and what needs to be righted and all that kind of stuff like girls getting paid at drag con or those kind of things that kind of stuff yeah stuff i love that stuff well i'm pulling for you Alyssa and candy me too uh, i'm I, pulling for you too from behind in the back i really enjoyed house of villain season one i thought it was a very uh a very fun take on the concept of a reality show it's like it's very aware of itself and mm. wacko. And New York is back. As she should be. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Tiffany makes everything better. She said, Omarosa, you are a cum-guzzling Republican cunt. She read her boots. And I sleep better at night knowing that you're not in the White House. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, she eviscerated her. Evisceration. That was wonderful. Lopez. Uh, we have a rainbow spotlight we that do. is for your ears to enjoy and also for your eyes to enjoy because it's on YouTube, too. This is called Hot Bitch by Chaik. Let's take a listen. I don't know how to say her name. Cheek. What do you think? Chick? This Cheek. name is C-H-E-I-Q. Chic? Chic, chic. Should we go chic, chic? chic. Or should chic, we go chic, chic? chic. chic. Either way, she's a hot bitch. She, IQ, chic. Either way. Who's that chic? chic. Who's, Who's that, that chic? chic? Let's take a listen. Hot bitch. Kiss that guy. They need a bitch. Hot bitch. Kiss that guy. They need a bitch. I'm hot. Oh my God. I'm rich. Hey, where you going? I'm that song. You never skip. Come over here, baby. Bitch, I'm hot. Uh -huh. I'm fucking rich. I can tell. The crowd goes loud when I'm in that bitch. <laughs> I'm so hot, hot right now. As is the walls come crashing down. Close your eyes if you can't watch your mouth. Louis shoes, they walking on your couch. You can't say nothing. Never 
The new Stars series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galitzine, tells a story almost too outrageous to be true, but shockingly, it is. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villiers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. You've never seen a mother-son duo like this before. The show is full of wit, scandal, action, and did I mention Julianne Moore? <laughs> Something this audacious and sexy is as genre-bending as it gets. You won't be able to look away. Watch the season premiere of Mary and George now, only on Stars and the Stars app. We are back. We are broadbacks. Uh... We have a very special gig. Broke back. <laughs> we have a special gig coming up, which Bear doesn't back. happen. We're like eclipses. Uh, the Triple A girls are getting together for a Japanese tour of one city, <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> yes. We're going to be at Zep Shinjuku on May 19th of 2024. Yes. And if you have any historical points of interest we need to see or local cultural um, fissures. Have you ever been to Tokyo? Yes. When? It was during AAA times, right? I went from December 24th to December 28th of 2014. Okay. That's fierce. Did you like it? I loved it. There's a store that's all secondhand Westwood. Oh. So it's breaking out the Westwood. Very um, loud. There's also... Uh, the Shinjuku district is my favorite one. Harajuku was fun. All these cool things. It was weird because there's a busy, busy, busy intersection. It's like one busy, of the busy, 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 busy. And I stood in the middle of it while everybody was crossing and it was like mice. It was so quiet. Like people are so quiet over there. Oh. It's not, it's like the opposite of New York. I feel like it's, it's so strange. You feel like you're in like a, uh, a future movie or something. That's so cool. Yeah, and it's weird, and I say this as um, someone who has a lot of privilege, but to for everything to be flipped and to be the minority, yeah. and to like everybody to be looking at you for a different reason than what you normally want, Yeah, type of thing. Um, I like it, but at the same time, it's so strange. Oh my God, I can't wait. And the addresses like stack up like it'll be like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then the one next to it will be like 500, 600, 700. The addresses made no sense to me. I have nice. no idea. But we do have a tour guide for someone. Um, we have Gina who lived there. Oh, yeah. My best Judy. She will be our best Judy over there. And she speaks Japanese too. Oh, perfect. We'll have a great time. These promoters are, will treat us lovely. And it will be opulence. It will be giving opulence. I have never been to Japan. I have never been to Tokyo. Uh, I'm so excited. It's one of those places that you hear about and it's just like life changing and you can't, can't even kind of describe it. Cherry blossoms in the snow. Cherry blossoms in the snow. Cranes in the sky. Mm -hmm. Very Solange. Uh, Solangia. We've we got to make sure Courtney doesn't wear that Mari though. We should ask. She's not bringing the fucking Mari. She doesn't do that anymore. She doesn't do the Mari with the baseball and cap. She does not do that anymore. That was the one era. Yeah, now she's onto her Angela Lansbury with sequins in it. Remember her Mardi Gras hair? I liked it. I thought she looked so hot. What? It's Evangelista. It's that. Mm. That was the reference. It's Evangelista. <sighs> well, I saw a trailer for a new movie, which I am very interested in seeing. It no stars way. a friend of the pod, Ms. Pat, and uh, Nicole Richie's in it, and lots of young people. It's a remake for Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Unbelievable. Do you think there's drag queens in it? Are they stealing their car? Oh, they fucking my better. God. And why didn't we audition? It's probably Alyssa and Candy. 
Alyssa, Candy, and Maddie Morphosis. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I. <sighs> there better be drag queens stealing that fucking Buick. That's all there I'm saying. Better be. Or I'm not getting to the grunion running, bitch. Mama. Fish don't even have feet. How can they run? Mama, the grunions are running. My we love. love this movie so much and we reference it a lot. It's just a, it was just a chip. Who plays the babysitter? Ms. Pat? No, the Ms. Pat's the mom. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, the babysitter, Mrs. Sturak, is played by this. I think she was in the the Jim Carrey Dr. Seuss movies. Okay. The Grinch ones. God. She's like this short little lady with this sweet little face. She's so cute. Oh, dear. It's very that. <laughs> um, Listen up, you little maggots. <laughs> if you love this movie as much as we do, or we you're really do. intrigued as to why we're always quoting it. I'm you interested should... and intrigued. I'm interested and intrigued. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> There's nothing like the original, but I am going to see this. Oh, I'm going to see where Where is it? Is it on streaming or what? In theaters April 12th. Ooh, okay. theatrical. All right, theatrical release. Oh, I love that. That's very exciting. Speaking of things being released, uh, there is a... Release me. Release my body. By Agnes. It's in your suitcase, darling. <laughs> release my body. No, your body. <laughs> it's being held by customs and I need it to be released so I can go to the gig. <laughs> uh, there is... Lots of girls who will be gigging soon because All Stars 9, the promo for that has been released. But I think it was an April Fool's joke. Oh. See? But you sent it to us on like the 30th. Well, I sent it to you yesterday. What day this was that? This is how they got the us. The 31st. And I was like, is this real? And I got duped last time too. Have you seen this RuPaul look anywhere else? This like 70s inspired. Yeah, she wore it on the show. I am literally. I remember the turquoise fringe. I'm never leaving my house on April 1st again. <laughs> Everyone is a terrorist for this. It's Girl, saying... let it. She. It's it's very like, wow, no way she would release an All Stars while the main season is still on. And nowadays it's like, well, yeah, she would. Yeah, she <laughs> She'd don't give be a fuck. like, All Stars is on Paramount Plus, regulars on MTV. Mm hmm. And they're airing at the same time, at the same channel, at the at the same day of the week. It's like... And the, we'd all be like, thank you. Yeah. I will watch it whenever it comes out. If this is true, I would be a little shocked. It's just, you know, why would you not want to give, like, one season of Girls at a time the spotlight? But then also, like, even if it doesn't air the same, like week as the normal season because the normal season ends April 19th and this is April 12th so they don't even give a girl like a a rain for like a week no they really just don't give a shit but it's this might not be real okay i think it's not real the graphic design is a little like it's just her standing straight and they've cut off her feet which is that isn't how I would do it. I would show the feet or I would crop it like here. Why don't we go to the here. Paramount Plus website and check? None of it is listed anywhere. So that's why I think it's fake. It's fake. Got it. <laughs> we wow. live in the age of the deep fake. There is no real anymore. They said All Stars is spring, summer, spring 2024. Okay. Did you happen to see the UK versus the world finale? I haven't. And I, I was trying to not have it spoiled. And I guess here we are. I was trying to not That's have it spoiled literally a too. A week later. Like it's, there's, it's my own fault. But I didn't watch it. But I'm seeing here that Tia Coffee is crowned the winner of UK versus the world. Mm -hmm. Good for her. I. I don't know what confluence of events happened in the final episode. I do. That would... Listen, Tia Coffee's wonderful. My pick for the win was Marina Summers. Uh, or the Grand Dame. Those were my personal picks. I think Tia Coffee was wonderful in this season. Don't get me wrong. She's fucking amazing and hilarious. But she won. I 
I spoke to two of the girls on the season. Shumita girls? Shumita girls. I spoke to Shumita girls on the season. And uh, there was a lip sync battle royale for the last episode with Hannah Conda, Marina Summers, Tia Coffey, and... LeGrand John. Yeah. And the first lip sync was Hannah versus Marina. It was Anastasia, I'm Out of Love. They showed Michelle Visage more than they did Marina Summers because Michelle is friends with Anastasia. Marina, from what one of the girls said, eviscerated. Another girl said Marina pulled out all the tricks, even tricks they'd never seen Marina do, and they had never seen a lip sync more clearly won by a person than Marina over Hannah. They, I think, knew that, you know, Tia could probably beat Hannah. Hannah did a great lip sync last week. She looked beautiful. She was wonderful. But I am not sure. I would love to see the edit on how they edited Marina down to nothing for that one more time. Just because you could see it the whole time. You're like, why do they keep showing Hannah and Michelle? Where's Marina? They wanted Tia to win, and I'm glad Tia won. She was wonderful on the show. She was funny. She was charming every time she won. She wore Latrice Royale's lesbian hiking boot. Remember that boot that Latrice wore yeah. that they dogged her out for? She wore that twice within the last two episodes in white. <laughs> okay, that's fine. She won a franchise in that boot. I can forgive the boot. Me too. I just don't understand why you wouldn't want Marina Summers to win. I mean, she's... Because you want her on another season, probably. She's that okay. good. I would want her on my TV again. That Tia's great, be. too. Tia's final lip sync um, against Hannah was funny. They had some bits work out where they dabbed, and then she had broken, bo like, sugar glass that they broke bottles on girls' heads. It was funny. It was cute. Was it a, a great lip sync I would have tipped for? No. Uh -huh. But... I'm glad that the UK has a black queen representing as a winner because the UK franchise has had problems casting anything except white queens. Yeah. They specifically had to search out people who weren't white to get on the show because they had none at one point in castings. Yeah. And this is from all the other UK girls who know who told me about it when I was doing Death Drop and stuff. So it's important because now people over there can see a girl and, you know, they have someone to look up to. Well, congratulations to Ms. Tia Coffey because it has been really exciting to see her uh, evolution yeah. and her growth since her original season. And you, you really see someone who has stepped into who they are meant to be as a, you know, as a queen. And so for her to win, fierce mama, f fucking get it, fucking do it. Who's going to tell you? No, not me. I think the re the uh, they had like a mini reunion where they brought all the girls back and Michelle hosted it. And if that's any indication for how Drag Race Down Under is going to be, you could skip it because it was just like she was doing her. I'm not RuPaul voice, but I'm going to try to blah, blah, blah. I just don't want her hosting. I don't know why. I think a drag queen should host a drag queen show. I don't think that you've mentioned that. I did. And enough so oh. that Pink News even picked it up. Which is the barometer for gay press. Hi, Pink News. You trash rag. Um, hey, press is press. Take it. Oh, I'm pressed. I, <laughs> yeah, you know who else is you, pressed? You seem to be. Miss yeah. Mayhem. Because they were talking about her being the first out. And oh, no. she's like, I don't think my lipstick. I shouldn't have been there at all. Blah, 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 blah. With her bowls. And then Tia piped up. And this is the moment that she won it for me. She said, because the girl that sent Mayhem, Mayhem home had Mayhem's name in the lipstick and then Tia went was the other girl in the lipstick and she's like well if it makes you feel any better Mayhem I also had your name on the lipstick <laughs> so Mayhem did look lovely though she was wearing custom Marco Marco we live she looked beautiful African queen she had her glove look glow up who else looked good Blue was there Blue Hydrangea mm -hmm. and when RuPaul announced the prize of 50,000 pounds Blue went what now she went what and then she went I, are, you, are you joking? And then RuPaul went, sorry, Blue. <laughs> and I have never seen a girl more like, wow, I just or got fucked. And I get it because like Blue spent so much money to go on this show twice and 
didn't see a return on the investment and now they're paying girls? This proves they don't give a fuck about the girls. But now they're paying the girls, so doesn't that mean that because they, they couldn't do get care? girls to say yes? That's why. Well, okay. because you couldn't afford it. You can't afford to spend all this money for a fucking pin, a badge, and yeah. some and some makeup. Let's move on to something more pleasing. Well, why don't we take a quick break and we'll be right back. Tia, this glove should be up to here. It should be <laughs> over your elbow. An evening glove goes over your elbow, Tia. You look so beautiful in this AstroTurf gown and this blonde hair. You look lovely, but this glove looks cheap. You should put a nail on the end of it and make it longer. You're a winner now. People are going to be critiquing and coming for you. I just, I'm a little shocked. I'm glad she won. I'm shocked Marina did not win. RuPaul looked at Marina several times, and one of the times she did the "You Were Born to Do Drag," which she also said to Crystal Versace, who yeah. won. And, and but she never said that to Tia. Tia's a great glow up. She's a great story. I'm happy that she won. Now let me help you style this outfit better when you come to America, girl. Let me help. It's so she don't look like a pterodactyl again. We'll be right back. She, she did a glow up on the pterodactyl look. I know, and it's great. No, it should have been fossilized. Oh. In magma. And this is my friend. T is my friend. This is what magma. Magma. <laughs> let's take a break and we'll be right back. Am I just unless, mad I'm not on it? Unless you have any more fashion critiques. For Today coffee. has been a day. <laughs> a day. We are back. Uh, I wanted to talk about something. I would like to talk. I would about like to talk about Madeline Ashton. Oh, yes. Uh, How, so, it was a great show. I loved it. I was present and accounted for. Well, you're talking about Britney. I'm talking about Art Pop, which I was supposed to be going to. Oh, Europe. was that your Europe gig? to be doing art pop divatronic over there. So what had happened was- I heard they're calling it fart flop. Some no. Oh, no. Uh, sometimes when you're a drag queen uh, and someone, and you get an offer to do a tour like this, which has been always like our intention and our dream to take divatronic on tour. Sometimes you say yes without really reading through the fine print well enough. So we, I said, yes, we're going to do it. So then, so then eventually PEG was like, we have to talk about this because even if you sell a hundred percent of these very large venues, your overhead, you, all those dancers, right? Right. You will not, and your you luggage. will not even break even. <gasps> And that's with modest calculations, like estimates. So I was like, okay. You're a bastion of modesty. So I was so I was like, we can't do that. No. So so if what, it don't make dollars, what are it don't options? make sense. So the options were we could do like a smaller version of it. Do Joanne. Just a guitar and a hat. But you can't change a show that you've already sold tickets to. Like we we thought about that, but it was like then it's like a bait and switch. It's like people want to see Divatronic Art Pop. We're using videos and pictures from Divatronic Art Pop to sell the tickets. And then it was like, we can't even give that. It would be like the cheaper, shittier version of it. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make the really difficult decision to be like, give everyone their money back. We're not doing it. And it was not a decision that came easily. And I know that people are really pissed off and really disappointed. And um, I am too. So uh, hopefully someday I can go to Paris, Berlin, Amsterdam, London with a show that's like sickening and good. I just did that exact routing with um, this yeah. great group called um, Club Kids. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did Paris, yeah, Berlin, Amsterdam last summer, Ibiza, right before they uh, shut down. <laughs> oh, they went under? Yeah. 
Club Kids with a K. I, I'm aware of them. I just... Yeah, they went under. They owe a lot of people money. I think I was one of the last girls to get paid. Um, I want the takeaway to be for um, artists who are out there who are like self-producing stuff. What, what I guess I didn't... Sometimes when you get offered an offer, it seems exciting. like a lot of money. It seems like, oh my God, these are the guarantees. This is great. And then you have to take into account that like you, the artist, are paying for everybody's flights, everybody's hotel rooms, to Europe. everybody's um, baggage and food. And that's just like the people. Then it's like you are paying for the spotlight and you are paying for the video assets and you're paying for the video screen and the, the projector. Sound guy. Yeah, everything. You're paying everyone who works at the venue. And then you look at it and you're like, this isn't, there's, this is impossible. This doesn't make any sense. So just, uh, just, you know, I mean, I'm very disappointed and I'm very sorry to anyone who bought tickets and was looking forward to it because I was really fucking looking forward to it too. Um, and it bums me out. And it was like the last thing that I wanted to do. But um, that's where we're at. So um, sorry. Trans Day of Vis Visibility. I think it should be Trans Day of Invisibility. And all trans people get to be invisible. And like, like no one can see them. And they get to like... They get to like sneak around. No, and... I want to see even the doll if she's near <laughs> well, me. I want to see. Well, I do too. But like the gift of invisibility is fierce. Uh, it kind of is, yeah. Or invincibility. That the trans day, day of, of invincibility. invincibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. That'll be great. <laughs> Let's see what Caitlin has to say about that. Did you see that girl, Caitlin? She no, she's is... a woman, not a girl. She's too old to be a girl. Miss woman. She said she came out of her mouth to say something about like trans day of visibility being on Easter and blah, 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 blah. As a devout Catholic. And it's like, girl, as a devout Catholic, I think there's some other things ahead of, of this calendar day that you should be worried about. Like, why are you? But it was also like, a, it, uh, also a mistake and like a coincidence that they ended up on the same day because Easter is the day that switches all the time. Yeah, it right? moves. And TVOD, Trans Day of Visibility, does not move. Is on the same date every. Caitlin time. said, "I am absolutely disgusted that Joe Biden has declared the most holy day of holy days, a self-proclaimed devout Catholic, as Transgender Day of Visibility. The only thing you should be clearing on this day is he is risen." And she why capitalized. She, but why is she saying this? Because she's a devout Catholic, and obviously no, her she's saying he's a devout Catholic. Yeah, Joe Biden is a self-proclaimed devout Catholic. Yeah, but she's also but saying, she's, yeah, she's, she's, she's also Catholic. saying he, the only thing that he should be declaring is he is risen, and she capitalized he, which means she's a Christian, because if you're a Catholic and you don't capitalize God, or when you refer to God with a capital letter, you're not a good Christian. And in 2017, she posted Trans Day of Visibility. There's no better visibility than with my sisters by my side. And these are the sisters that were cast on her television show <laughs> to be her sisters. They're not her actual sisters. Um, what a strange woman. I, 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 and I guess it, it becomes a conundrum that like, the, and it really has nothing to do with religion or, you know, trans visibility. It has to do with she doesn't like Joe Biden as a candidate. And so will say anything to sort of to sort of stir up anti Joe Biden sentiment. Like, I get it. You don't want to get on the bus, but you don't have to drive the bus because everyone will <laughs> die then. Like you don't like why are you coming for this? Why are you coming for trans well, day of visibility she comes sideways out of her fucking head all the time? And, and that's why she doesn't get invited to the fun trans uh, parties. That's why Gaga had to change her barista. I've changed baristas. Girl. That's right, mother. That's my, that's my mother. We have some other things to talk about now that we're getting political. Uh, this comes from... Let's Wait, what's the first note? Let's, let's get... get Political, 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 I want to get political. Let me see your thighs. Oh, 
Let me see it, but not let me hear it. That is chromatic. That is chromatic. Atonal. Um, A queer history is being taught in only a few states. The advocate says that more than 550 anti-LGBTQ plus bills were introduced across the U.S. in 2023. 80 were passed into law. Less than three months into 2024, 479 anti-LGBTQ plus bills have been introduced, many of which restrict or outright prohibit LGBTQ plus curriculum in public schools, according to the ACLU. In Florida, kindergarten through 12 teachers who include queer subjects and lessons are at a risk of losing their licenses under the state's don't say gay law. My sister's a teacher in Florida, and she told me all of this is true. Like, they've had to take so many books out of the classrooms and stuff just so she doesn't get in trouble. In contrast, seven states instead require that LGBTQ plus identities be included in history and social science lessons. Like, how are they going to teach about World War II if you don't include Alan Turing? Like, the whole reason that we're not speaking German or Japanese right now is because Alan Turing cracked a code which helped the British defeat the Germans and fucking Hitler. And then they chemically castrated the guy and he killed himself. So, like, can we not learn about that because we're afraid of people knowing that our governments were terrible to people? Like, restricting civil rights and, like, making claims that, oh, one nation under God and uh, all that when it's not true. It's it's just very strange. Like, I don't, I mean, it's not logical. It's just like, it's just hate-based in order to like get get people voting and give them something to be upset about. Mm-hmm. And it, it, cause it doesn't actually make sense. It's like, just because you don't, talk about it in schools doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's so preposterous. Uh, Why the fuck are they worried about this? They should be teaching mortgages, taxes. Mama. Like, and they're worried about not saying gay. Gay people are some of the, like, in histories and, like, cultures all around the world, gay people were the teachers. Everyone is a fag. <laughs> there hasn't ever been a Turn world. Turn on your fucking television. Turn on a movie. Huh. If it looks good, facts. This is crazy. California became the first state to require that history and social science lessons portray LGBTQ people and other marginalized groups in 2011 through the Fair Education Act. Jersey became the second state to mandate the curriculum for LGBTQ plus people in 2019. Colorado passed HB 19, 1192 in 2019 after New Jersey. And that not only required lessons including marginalized group, but authorizes state funding to be put towards it. And then Oregon, of course, is great, but they had to make up for all their fucking terrible things that they did <laughs> back in the back in the day against other marginalized groups. Oh. Oregon had some fucked up laws for black people. It's something called the Lash Law, which was like, if you wanted to live in Oregon because Oregon was like deciding if they were going to be a free state or a non-free state. And so they just decided we won't really adjudicate on it, but if you're black and you want to live there more than I think six months or three years or something, oh, if you're black and you want to live there, you have to get publicly lashed every six months. It's called the lash law. It's crazy that it was on the books. That is so fucking weird. But in 2019, they have legislation that is explicitly intersectional for curriculum law. I don't know what that means, but Oregon's doing better. Washington, Illinois, Nevada all have that too. Connecticut. Connecticut, Yeah, this one is interesting. Connecticut is the only state in the country where law requires the education department to create LGBTQ plus inclusive curriculum, but does not require schools to use it. I feel like Connecticut has a lesbian governor, don't they? No, that's Oregon. But that's the crazy thing about writing this stuff. It's like they all pass the law that they have to create the curriculum, but then they don't require them to use it. So teachers can just opt out. (sighs) So fucking weird. Yeah, it really is. Why don't we take a break? Couple months. (laughs) 
Would you like to get in this cave? I think it's time for us to go spelunking. Spelunking, okay. Deep inside the DMs. This first message comes from Rose. Rose or Rose? Hopefully it's Rose. It's up to you. There's no accent above the E. No accent. We could read no it. No extra I. We could read it in Rose's voice. I don't know how that would be done. With her little Scottish accent, her brogue. Or as that character with the black bangs. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. Wait, Kelsey Ballerini was wearing the rosé German accent. The Balenciaga, all pink. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know the outfit. I don't know the hair. It is my first time for my first day in Cocos a day or something. What is she having in the, what is she having? Lollipop. She has a lollipop. My first lollipop of the day. I don't know what this is, but it strangely intrigues me. Meatball posts it every three days on her story (laughs) because she's obsessed with it. She's a troll. She is a. Has Meatball ever dressed up as a troll? That would be perfect. With a giant gemstone. Yes. In her belly button. And then gemstones for nipples too. Sure. Yes, she should. Can you play it? I'm getting the video. I don't. Huh. I think it's a deep I think it was like an Instagram story. Well, Rose, maybe Rose says, <laughs> My name, I am a huge fan of the pod. I listen every week. This is my first time writing in. My name is Rose, she, her. Okay, well, that solves it. Thank you for writing in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 22. I'm from Arizona. I'm writing you all to ask about a trend that I've noticed among various straight men that has tickled my pickle recently. I work in construction, so I'm constantly interacting with straight men while I'm there. I've noticed that many of them quote Bianca Del Rio's iconic phrase, not today, Satan. Some of them I've heard say multiple times. It always takes me off guard when I hear it said from men who most likely do not watch Drag Race. My question is, did Bianca Del Rio originate the phrase, not today, Satan? It's honestly quite hilarious that they are quoting one of the most iconic lines and winners from Drag Race royalty and have no idea. Please come back to Phoenix, Arizona. Please, dying to see you both live. I love you both. With love, Rose. Um, I saw a housewife. I don't know what franchise. It was on the Traders, I believe. Wait, there, no, it was, uh, it was on Potomac, I think. It was a supercut of this woman eviscerating other cast members. And one of the things she was like, not today, Satan, not something, something. And then it was like a three-er. Yeah. And she said it, and she definitely did not originate it. The first time I've heard it was through Bianca. Yes, I think the answer is that Bianca kind of made it popular and then it has trickled out into other shows and other franchises and other comedians are saying Mm -hmm. it. Yes. I don't know if she invented it, but for our community, she did. Yeah. Um, And I mean, that's how most things happen. Either gay people or black women, mm -hmm. sorry, LGBTQ people or black women start something and then it trickles down to the flyover states and everywhere else. Stuff usually starts on the coasts and then works its way to the middle. And then it finds its way into the bargain bin that you fished that lumpy blue sweater out of that says Not Today Satan on it. (laughs) Maybe check out the 1975 film The Devil's Reign. Oh. With all of our free time. Well, Maybe it is from a, oh, a movie, and she said a, a, a 1975 movie. The phrase can be understood as an expression of resisting temptation or evil impulses personified by Satan. Not today, Sat. Not today, Satan, which is, uh, which is something that um, Taffeta usually says, right. This comes from Ashley. Hi, girlies. Long time, third time, or something like that. Seeking a peek behind the curtain. You've mentioned many times along the years that it's tiring to stand in your runway outfit for judging that lasts hours. As a viewer, this segment takes maybe five minutes. Can the actresses in the room explain to the rest of us why it takes so long behind the scenes? I have never been on a set, so I don't understand the mechanics of it, and I always wondered. Ashley. Well, there was a time from 2003 to 2018 that I was a working actor. Um, and Drag Race was a gig for me where I was constantly flummoxed at how inefficient they were. And I was shocked at how long that we had to stand there and do all of this. And then in the middle of it, we'd go break for lunch. It's like, well, why didn't we shoot this all before lunch? Why do we have to return to this setup? Because it could be 
timely for everybody to start a new setup after lunch, after we got everything, and then like, you know. Yeah. I I don't know why it took so long, other than every judge has to say something positive and negative about every person usually yeah. down the line. And then repo camera in between each. No, it's not a repo camera. They literally just move it. It's not a repo. A move, yeah. Moving the camera angle-wise is different than moving it. Like off of its legs. Wheel-wise. Yeah. I don't know why it takes so long. But for if you have 13 or 14 girls and you have to spend five to seven minutes on each girl. That adds up. It adds up. It really does. I mean, just mathematically, even if the judges only said one positive thing and one negative thing, it would still take a long time mm -hmm. for every person on stage for each judge. Like permutation wise, that automatically takes a long time. But it's not just one positive thing and one negative thing. It's a full on conversation. Yeah. That do none of it really makes it to air. If you're deemed safe, nothing makes it to air. But it is a conversation from the judges about like, you know, so how, what do you think about this? So you're from San Diego. What was that like? Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it does take a long time. And standing in heels is harder than walking in heels for a long period of time. Yep. Because the muscles get fucking tired out and the muscles get weak from like, oh, girl, shifting back and forth. Oof. Ooh, mama. Oh, and, it's so and hard. And do not take your shoes off and then try to put them back on. Because then they swell, and then Oof. they don't go back on, and cuckity caca. Yeah, it's like shoving a watermelon in a lemon. Lemon. Fruit salad. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> the next message comes from Nolan. Hello, Alaska Willem and Big Dip. Long time, first time. I'm a huge fan of the pod. I also wanted to quick say, quick congratulations on your winning another Queer Chi Award. Huge props to Alaska for making Drag the Musical such a hit show. I was wondering if either of you have any theater rituals, superstitions, or good luck charms you do before a big performance. Are there any fun pre-show rituals you've seen with other casts and crews? For priority boarding, I've attached a few pics for your viewing pleasure. I'm 6'3", verse cum slut cub, with a pretty thick dick and a furry ass. All the love, Nolan from Nashville. Oh my gosh. All this hole and painted nails too. With an accent nail. Look that's at that yellow nymphia nail. Too. <laughs> Nipple what? rings. That's a book title too. <laughs> All this All hole. this hole and painted nails too. Honestly, I think that could be. Oh, I expensive. love this. These are cozy. <laughs> these are cozy nudes, which I like. It seems like you're in a cozy place. You're in a cozy position. Um, uh, your pillows and blankets are so nice and comfortable looking. If you want to talk about pillowy, let's talk about that hole. Some of that used to be on the inside. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Am I wrong? I just zoomed in. What? And I think I saw... Um, I, I've seen. I've seen. What did he want to know? What did Nolan want? Theater rituals. I want to know oh. this from you. What are your theater rituals? Put on makeup and go do a good job. <sighs> I don't do any rituals. They... Um, I have tons of them. Only when forced to. They made me um, like do this warm up with uh, with Death Drop. We had to run this one scene every day before the show. This dinner scene because they wanted the pace. Like fast, fast, ka -ka 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 -ka. So, and if one person misses it, it throws off the whole rhythm. Yep, that was our sure. our West End gig. We had to do that. Um, and just doing fight calls. That's probably the because you it, anytime there's like. A gun, a fake knife, or anything physical in a show, you have to do a fight call sure. the day of the show. So, like, if you're on Broadway and there's combat, you have to do the fight call every day. And the West End is the same way, I think. Are you going to do a fight call in Aruba? No. No Your fight family? call. Uh -uh. No fight call. Um, what are your rituals? Well, I like to eat Chipotle on the day that I have a show. And that's, that's like every a, day. That's like a drag show yeah. or a theater show. Uh... So I like to have that. And then my tea is very important. Tea is a, something tangible and comforting that I always have. And I make it and I put it in my thing and I take it to the theater with me. And then I have a mug that I brought from home at the theater that I pour it into little by little so it stays hot. Hot tea. 
hot tea, hot jazz. In the middle of Drag the Musical, after I sing It's a Drag, I have some time where I'm not on stage. So I go all the way down to the dressing room and I eat one of those um, Lifesaver mints. So that's like my little treat in the middle of the show. Be good to yourself. Yeah. Uh, and I also don't whistle in the theater because it's supposed to be bad luck to whistle Yeah, and you're the not theater. supposed to say Macbeth, right? Yeah. Whistling is, is um, it used to be the way they signaled for the fly system, oh. like for things to fly in and out from the ceiling. Okay. So if you whistle, like someone could think that's the signal to drop the set down and then you could kill somebody. Mm. So you, it, which isn't th really what it is anymore, but it stayed on as a superstition. So I love whistling in my, in my normal life. So I really have to be careful not to whistle. I can only whistle from one end. <laughs> That's how it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a barge going down a river at night. <laughs> Damn. This message comes from Aiden. Hi, Divas. I know you are familiar with the queen mother herself, Delta Lena, who oh. changed the flight safety video scene forever. But have you looked at her Twitter lately? It turns out she's a mega conservative. Oh, no, not Delta Lena. Who hates trans people, immigrants, no, no, and a no. lot of other groups. It's sad to <laughs> see someone so iconic be so hateful. Fuck. My question is, when a diva turns out to be completely awful, are you still comfortable referencing her in any positive way? <laughs> like, if you do the finger wag, are you paying tribute to her or do you prefer to remove her from your, your mental catalog Aiden you know what someone with this much FFS being against trans people is a fucking idiot the nose is fake the lips are fake what a stupid fucking dipshit the cheek person. looks fake yeah I'm mama there's filler everywhere you can get it on that mug and you want to come for our community? I'm telling Delta. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that. It's so easy for people to go into this hatred thing because it makes them feel belonged. Like they then get to belong to this really loud, obnoxious group that's, like, based on hate hatred. Wait, I have a group? <laughs> they instantly get to feel like they belong by excluding somebody else. And it's so fucking dumb, and it's tacky, and she fucking sucks. And you know what? I'm going to still wave my finger, but it's going to be waving for every fucking trans person, immigrant, and every other person out there who feels marginalized or victimized by these fucking hate-filled fucking assholes. And That's I, what this is for. And I hope Delta does the responsible thing and takes her off the international uh, routes and puts her on domestic puddle jumpers from <laughs> San Jose to Sacramento. There you go. Girl, and she's not in the promo, uh, the she's safety the videos cutter. anymore. The cutter. You know why? So. Hateful. She made her own journey. Hate, hateful Helen. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Hot Goss. Remember to please take a moment to review our show on your preferred podcast app. And shout out to all of our Mom Plus Gold subscribers who are listening to this episode ad-free behind that good pussy paywall. And to sign up for Mom Plus and Mom Plus Gold, please visit mompodcast.com. Plus. Plus. Follow us on Instagram at Willem at the only Alaska 5000 at Race Jades or Pod and at Mom Podcast. Stay safe out there, everybody, especially if Caitlin's on the road. Girl, and we'll be back next week or Delta Lena. Mm. I mean, my God. Uh, uh, girl. Uh, girl. <laughs> we will be back next week with another steaming, steaming piping, piping, scalding, scalding serving of Hot Hot Oh. Uh, Mom! Mom.
To get access to our monthly video episodes and tons of bonus content, sign up for Mom Plus Gold at mompodcasts.plus. Hosted by Alaskan Willem. And produced by Big Dipper. Editing and sound design by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Alaska, Big Dipper, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Our theme song is by Alaska Thunderfuck 5000. Who, me? Who, me?